So next up we have Michael Carney, who is a visualization consultant at Canon, and Sam Haddad, manager of desktop gaming and development for Design Interactive. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, so we were both up here because recently Canon and Design Interactive had a collaboration um, on a design project. Um, as our host mentioned, my name is Michael Carney. I'm from Canon USA. Uh, most of you may know us for our cameras and our printers, uh, but Canon also develops uh, leading edge visualization technology. Um, so we have a product called MREAL, which is Canon's mixed reality display. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over what that is briefly, and then Sam will iterate on how uh, they use that technology. So Canon's MREAL, or mixed reality, is a head mount display technology that combines virtual objects um, and the physical environment for immersive experience. So it's essentially a head mount display with two cameras, two front facing cameras, one for each eye, and then two screens. Uh, so what this is allows us to do is we can look around and see our colleagues, we can see physical objects, and we can embed virtual objects on top of that. But uh, not only augmenting uh, virtual components, we can also touch and interact physical objects or physical prototypes. So what this allows us to do is to enable a greater level of realism. Uh, so we can see our colleagues, we can see our clients. Um, and it affords a more immersive, more realistic, more interactive experience. And one of the things we're noticing is, while most of the members in this room are really familiar with these types of technologies, we have an actual product and we go out to a client, uh, we're presenting them with these really exciting opportunities, but they may not know how to design for these specific areas. Uh, so there's lots of questions that are asked. Um, um, how our technology works is we have our head mount on display. Um, it, it can be a head mount or it can be a handheld display that is similar to a pair of binoculars. Um, it's a complete system, so we have different tracking technologies. Um, we can use optical cameras. We can use a marker base, which you'll see in this demo. We can also use gyro and magnetic sensors. Uh, so we've been having a couple clients looking at um, design and manufacturing, uh, uh, simulation and training, and what Sam is going to show today is looking at high-risk training. So being able to put people in immersive environments, take them to places that we wouldn't, shouldn't, or couldn't do uh, in reality. Thank you, Michael. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Sam Haddad. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about applying mixed reality uh, to specifically high risk, high cost training. And the example you're about to see shows a submarine firefighting scenario. Currently, the way this type of training is done is some student is sat at a desk, he's given a, a joystick, and basically he's told to put out the fire, you know, sitting down at a desk with no hands on experience. And it doesn't elicit the stress necessary to really get the person in the moment at what, you know, how that emergency. Uh, uh, can affect their uh, psycho psychology. So um, in the video you're seeing on the top is what the attendee actually sees. So he's actually a fully immersed in a sub and those pipes are real pipes augmented with virtual dials and the person interacts with different touch points or inputs in the uh, scenario and then the person actually has to put out the fire with real objects. So. Basically, the, the attendee has to do exactly what the real training would be in the real world. And this is accomplished using virtual water and virtual fire. And uh, basically, it's integrated with the Unity 3D game engine and the Canon headset, which Michael just spoke about. So by doing this, you're really eliciting the stress that, that you would come to expect when you're doing a real firefighting maneuver. So instead of just having a desktop application, and then throwing these guys in these high fidelity simulators, which are very high cost and have real fire and have real risks, this kind of scenario offers an alternative that really immerses them, but at the same time gets around the high cost and the risks of doing that kind of training. And I'd like to just speak a little bit about some of the touch points you saw in the video. Uh, so basically, those are real pipes he's seeing. You can actually touch those pipes and then the dials are actually synchronized with the scenario. So in the typical submarine training, someone is having to watch these dials and then uh, if the pressure goes high, obviously you know, you know there's a problem. So it's synchronized with the scenario. And then the person has to call in the fire. 
So as something as simple as picking up a phone and calling it, in a pure virtual environment, accomplishing something like that can be very difficult. But in a mixed reality environment, it's very natural. The person literally just grabs a phone and calls it in. And then the last interaction is basically using a real fire hose. That's a real fire hose nozzle. And it has a real fire hose attached. And then it has a marker or a target on the end of that hose that then knows where to project the water particles. And then you literally extinguish the virtual fire with the virtual water. Um, and uh, it does that seamlessly, as you saw in the video. So those are some of the interaction points uh, that we had to discuss. And um, that was basically our demo. So. Again, we're going to open the floor for questions um, as we're setting up the next speaker. Yes. <laughs> so, so um, some of the objects in the in the virtual world are real and some aren't. Um, so, how did you choose which ones to make real and which ones not? And were people reaching for for virtual objects, and did it disrupt the illusion? Um, I don't think we actually observed any sort of disruption. We made the real objects relevant to the scenario. Um, so a lot of the virtual ob objects you wouldn't actually touch, like the dials in that example. The way we accomplished it is using chroma key. So in the, in the, in the pictures you see there, the green uh, basically lets you know where you want to paint the virtual world. And it's difficult to tell from these pictures, but you actually have depth. So the real objects have depth and the virtual world has depth as well. Because as Michael mentioned, there are stereo cameras on the headset. Other questions? Quick question on user testing, or, or what was the uh, latency between the cameras and the display? What's the user seeing when he moves his head? Um, I don't know the actual latency number um, off the top of my head, unfortunately, but it is quite low. As you can see, the person is able to really take the hose and, and put it out and not really have that uh, dissonance between what he's seeing and what he's doing. I don't know if you know that number off the top of your head. Uh, uh, great, great presentation, Nicole Zara from Zio Design. I was curious, what your in your user testing, what was the response to the um, the physical the physical pipes? What what were users saying as opposed to other training that they may have experienced? What did it What did it add in their opinion to the experience? I think the pipes just allowed them to actually feel real objects in the scenario. I think it's more feeling the actual hose that really led to that wow moment. Because you're not using a joystick or a game pad. You're literally using a real object as your input into the scenario. That's all the time we have for questions. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We're running a little bit behind schedule. Field of vision. How wide is the field of vision? Uh, the current field of view is 50 degrees for the mixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Michael and Samuel.